Okay, well, let's start now. Hello, everyone. Welcome to join my talk today. Okay, next, I'm Fisher Xu from QBH community. Okay, today we were talking about extending cloud native boundaries and how to uh, break cloud native workloads to a joint OS with QBH. Yeah. Well, first, this is a, a brief introduction of myself. Uh, now I'm a technical steering committee member of the QBH community. And also, I'm a software engineer from High Cloud, and you can find me uh, at the GitHub. Okay, first, this is the uh, background I want to introduce. Yeah, uh, uh, run the uh, cloud native workloads to the uh, Azure OS may be a new new topic, new idea for many people. Uh, you may be ask me uh, why you want to run the uh, cloud native workload to the Azure OS. Uh, yeah. Why not run the run them all the uh, Linux di distributions directly, like the uh, Ubuntu, CentOS? Yeah, uh, this is I think this is a background I want to introduce today. Yeah, uh, you can see the devices based on the Azure OS. I widely use the various business domain such as the uh, set dot box and the advertising screen and the robots and the software defined vehicles. Yeah. And these devices are usually reaching the uh, computer resources. Yeah, so users are now uh, exploring how to uh, use these uh, 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 co compute uh, capabilities. Yeah. Furthermore, in the context of the HRT scenarios, there's a strong demand for the uh, cloud native technology in mobile smart devices to use their uh, computer resources. So. Uh, this is a uh, list of some uh, ideas users are exploring. Yeah, first is the leveraging the uh, hardware capabilities of the uh, Android devices and the software resources such as the GPU and the other uh, OCR images. Yes, another one is uh, applying the cloud edge collaborative edge computing technology to Android devices. Yeah, furthermore, expand the application scenarios of cloud native edge computing with QBH in the mobile domain extending cloud native boundaries. Okay, I think this is the uh, uh, background of the topic. Yeah, in summary, in summary, uh, many users now exploring how to use the uh, computer resources in the Android, uh, Android OS devices and other mobile devices. Okay. Okay, next I will introduce the uh, QBH community. Yeah. Uh, KubeH is a project built based on the Kubernetes. Yeah, I, I, uh, we think KubeH is not a distribution of the Kubernetes. It's not a Kubernetes distribution. We have done many uh, enhancements based on the Kubernetes. Yeah, uh, from the architecture, you can see KubeH include three parts: the uh, cloud part, edge part, and the devices part. Yeah. Uh, in the close part, you can see uh, we are uh, built, built based on the uh, Kubernetes master. Yes, the cloud core is the components uh, we uh, built. Yeah, uh, you, you may have questions why we need the uh, cloud core components. Yeah, this is the uh, about the uh, edge scenarios. Uh, we think in the edge scenarios, the uh, edge node usually located in many different places. Yeah. Uh, such as in the campus, in the vehicle, yeah, other, other places. So usually the uh, network between the cloud and edge are unstable. So uh, we uh, do have done some enhancements between the cloud and edge network yeah, in the unstable networking. Yeah, this is uh, uh, why we uh, built the cloud core components. Yeah. Uh, Another part is the edge part. The edge part include, also include two parts. The left side is the uh, application aging. It's a, a lightweight, lightweight uh, kubelet. We have done some uh, cutting of the, uh, based on the kubelet, yeah. The right part is the uh, IoT devices management part. Yes, we uh, also do some, have done some work uh, to manage the edge devices. Okay, uh, uh, in the edge part, uh, uh, as I said, we have done some uh, lightweight cutting uh, based on the kubelet. So the uh, edge core uh, 
the footprint of the edge core is about um, 70 MB, so uh, it can run uh, many lightweight devices, yeah. Okay, uh, I think this is all the uh, architecture of the QBH. Okay, uh, next page is some core concept of the QBH. Yeah, the first is the uh, open ecology, yeah. Uh, because we are based, uh, we are built based on the Kubernetes, so we are fully compatible with the native Kubernetes uh, API. Yeah, from the uh, architecture you can see, uh, users, you can, can use the uh, Kubernetes API to deploy and manage the uh, application from cloud to the edge node. Yeah, users can also use the uh, Kubernetes API to uh, manage the IoT devices. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the next is the reliable list watch interface for the edge. Uh, this means we also have the uh, Kubernetes native uh, interface in the edge. Uh, users can also access the Kubernetes API from the edge side. Yeah. Yeah. Next one is uh, about the edge devices. Yeah. We have a uh, extensible uh, framework for the uh, edge IoT devices that we can support, uh, like MQTT, uh, Modbus, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, OPC UA, and uh, uh, other protocols. Yeah. Uh, another one is we support managing massive edge devices. Yeah. Because the lightweight weight of the uh, edge core, so it can run in a resource constrained uh, environments. Yeah. As I described. Yeah. Uh, another one is uh, we have an extensible framework for the edge device management, so uh, we can manage uh, many. Uh, devices for many protocols. Yes, another one is uh, uh, we can support complex edge cloud networking environment. Yeah, as I de de described, uh, we think uh, in many scenarios, the uh, network between the cloud and edge are, are very unstable, uh, usually disconnect, reconnect. So we have done some uh, enhancements based on this uh, networking station, yeah. Yes, the next one is the application data edge autonomy. Yeah, this is another a big feature Kubeage uh, have. Yeah, uh, I want to uh, introduce the edge, uh, what is edge autonomy uh, in the Kubeage uh, architecture. Yeah, uh, in the uh, native Kubernetes, uh, you know, uh, when the uh, pod uh, and the other metadata set to the uh, Kubernetes uh, will uh, save the metadata in the memory. So uh, uh, now when we, uh, when the uh, edge node uh, get offline and then restart, then the, at this time the uh, Kubelet can't recover the uh, application. But in Kubeage, uh, we store the metadata in our uh, database in edge. So when the edge node get offline and restart, it can load the metadata from the uh, circulate database and then recover the uh, application. So we can ensure the uh, application run or the edge node stably. Yeah, this is the uh, edge autonomy features. Yeah. The last one is edge cloud integrated resource scheduling and traffic coordination. Yes, uh, this is means we can uh, manage the uh, cloud node edge uh, edge node, yeah. We can schedule the uh, resources from cloud at edge. Yeah. Okay, this is the uh, core concept of the Kubeage project. Okay, next I will uh, have an uh, introduction of the edge architecture. Yeah, this is the uh, overall architecture of the edge node. Uh, you can see uh, the above is the close side, then uh, it said the metadata or other uh, message from the uh, uh, UC WebSocket protocol then sent to the edge node. The edge node, will, uh, the edge hub will uh, receive the uh, metadata then sent to the meta server. Meta server will store the metadata in the database then sent to the edge, we call it HD. Yeah, actually it's a 
uh, light kubelet, uh, lightweight kubelet, then it will uh, run the uh, container uh, applications in the edge node. Yeah, this is uh, overall architecture uh, in the edge. Yeah, the right side is the uh, how we do do this in the GitHub. Uh, first, we fork uh, Kubernetes repo in Kubernetes org. Then we do some uh, lightweight cutting for the Kubelet. Then we uh, replace the Kubernetes in Kubernetes with uh, our own forked repo. Yeah, this is the overall architecture of the uh, edge node. Okay, uh, next page I will introduce. This is the overall uh, Kubernetes uh, platform. Uh, the above is the uh, industry compatibility shoot. We uh, have do, uh, many shoots for uh, di different industry, industries such as the AI, IoT, MEC, uh, with many uh, start projects like Sedna, HMesh. Yeah. The middle is uh, some uh, core framework of the Kubernetes project, like the uh, scheduling system or uh, uh, right time, yeah. The uh, below is the uh, 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 hardware we supported, yeah. Today I will introduce the uh, Android OS is one of the uh, uh, hardware we can support. Okay, uh, next I will introduce how we run the Kubernetes edge node or the Android OS. We take uh, uh, this device as an example. Okay, uh, first, this is the um, uh, technical key points uh, we need to know when we run the application of the Android OS. Android OS. Yeah, uh, you know the Android OS, it also has a Linux kernel, uh, but uh, we have to modify the kernel to support containers, uh, similar to Linux OS, yeah. This is the, uh, mm, uh, main challenges when we run the container or the uh, Android OS, yeah. Uh, you can see we listed, uh, we need to uh, modify the uh, Linux namespace config at the C group config and the networking config and the overlay file system is also uh, not spotted in the uh, Android Linux kernel, yeah. An uh, another one is about the uh, scheduling uh, config in the uh, Linux kernel, yeah. Uh, in, in summary, we need to um, modify the con configuration of the uh, Linux kernel in Android OS, yeah. Uh, the second part is the Android network. Network, we also need to do some modification, yeah. First, you know the paranoid network. Uh, this is the default mode of the uh, Android OS, so we must uh, uh, disable it, yeah. Then you can uh, create the socket or other bridge uh, network, yeah. Yeah, the next is uh, like IP table routing issues. Also, we need to modify. Uh, we need to add some IP table row, routing row, yeah. Yeah, uh, another one is the draw storage. Storage we also need to modify, yeah. Uh, we, we need to do some uh, modification to support the overlay FS, yeah. Uh, the last one is you must know uh, understanding of cloud native, such as a joint G GPU camera, how to use these devices, you also to know. Okay. Okay, this is the overview of uh, what we uh, do the modification in the uh, Linux kernel, uh, including the uh, storage, uh, namespace, networking, C group, and security. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is. Uh, uh, some C group rules we need to mount or the host, and we uh, need to add some routing rules in the host and disable the uh, SD Linux. Yeah, right side is the um, uh, Linux kernel configuration. We need to uh, enable it for support the uh, container uh, workloads. Okay. Okay. Uh, next is the um, uh, implementation process. Yeah, how, to, how we uh, to do it on the uh, Android OS, yeah. First, we need to download the SDK for the devices. Uh, it includes the uh, OS and the Linux kernel, yeah. Then we need to uh, do some modification based on the Linux kernel, 
yeah. Uh, after we do the multiplication, we can use this uh, script from the Mobi project to check. Yeah, the 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 result the result will show uh, what uh, you you will need to do some other uh, modification if you need it. Yeah. Uh, the next one is we need to modify the uh, overlay backing file system. Yeah. In these solutions, we mount a SSD to we. Uh, to the Android uh, devices for as the root FS of the uh, 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 runtime. Yeah. Next one is the uh, Android networking. Yeah, we add some uh, roles for the uh, host like uh, root role and role and the IP table roles. Yeah, this is some examples. Yeah. The next one is uh, we need to do download the. Uh, static binaries of the Docker or ContainerD uh, run into the uh, host. Yeah, then uh, we need to call, configure the uh, DNS resolve. Yeah, DNS resolve is also linked in the uh, Android devices. Yeah, the last one, uh, we can uh, configure this device all to start in, in the devices. Yeah, uh, this is the uh, uh, process of how we done. Yeah, this is a demo show of the uh, results. First, you can uh, see we uh, use Docker run, run a container in the uh, Android devices. Yeah, and then uh, we log into the container. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the last one we uh, I will introduce how we uh, deploy the Kube Edge to the Android OS after the. Uh, container runtime is ready. Yeah. Uh, first, we need to uh, uh, ensure the Android OS can access the uh, closed side of KubeH. Then we uh, use the KubeH releases and inst install the edge code to the Android OS. Yeah. Uh, for the network issue, we can use the edge mesh uh, project in the uh, KubeH community. Edge mesh is a, a networking components for uh, for KubeH, it can ensure the uh, cloud and the networking application co uh, communication. Yeah. Yeah. Then we use the KubeH static edge call or the ARM server. Yeah. This is all the process uh, how to run the uh, edge call in the edge node. Okay. Next, this is a, a demo show of the uh, results of. of uh, when we uh, install the KubeH or the adjoint OS, yeah, we get node. You can see the uh, adjoint devices is also listed in the cloud. Yeah, then we deploy some pod to the adjoint devices. Uh, you can see uh, we get pod. This is the applications run on the adjoint OS. Yeah, then we uh, use uh, login to the uh, container from the cloud. You can see this is the route. Okay. Okay, now uh, we have deployed the KubeH to the Adjoint OS. We can manage the uh, Adjoint OS devices from the cloud. Okay. Okay. This is the um, summary and outlook in future. Yeah. For more details, you can see the uh, documents in this report. Yeah. Yeah. In future, we will also deploy. deploy uh, how to uh, run KubeH uh, or the uh, container runtime or the risk five architecture. And uh, we will also exploit protocol application is a wide range of uh, mobile edge scenarios. Yes, we will also uh, exploit uh, how to uh, run the new technology such as memory assembly uh, to the uh, edge nodes. Okay. Okay, I think this is all the information I introduced. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Here, right here. Hello. Uh, once you have de deployed your uh, container on the Android platform, yeah. uh, how do you access to the Android uh, uh, framework? Through Binder, for example? Uh, how to access the Android device from cloud? How, how can you access from inside your container? 
Yeah? How can you access to the Android framework? Because you have to access to the services running on Android. Yeah? How can you access from your container, inside the container, to the, the Android framework? Uh, okay, I, I think this, uh, it can also use the host, uh, host network mode, then they can uh, access the network from the container in the Android OS devices. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. If you have any questions, you can go to the Kube Edge booth to uh, uh, discuss with me. Okay, thank you.